You know, I've had to uh, watch my grandkids eat hamburgers and french fries, and I've had to, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, be around people who are eating steaks or eating good meals, and, and uh, you know, I was saying, no, I'm, I'm going to do right, I'm going to eat right. Uh, she'll tell you, I, I'm drinking nothing but basically water. Uh, a few times I'll drink no sugar Gatorade just to get some of that uh, electrolytes in me, uh, but other than that, that's what I've been drinking, and so, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's been hard. It hadn't been easy. It's a lot easier to put it on than to take it off. Can you say amen? It's so much easier. But you know, I got to thinking, uh, that's why uh, you see me kind of wearing the same clothes. Uh, uh, it's because my clothes don't fit anymore. And uh, I, I'm, I'm losing weight. I can't keep my pants up. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And uh, my, my, most of my suit jackets, this one here is one I wore about 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I found it in the closet this morning and it actually fit me. And I said, praise the Lord. Come on, amen. And so I just began to think think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a process. How I many know it's a process? Uh, but instead of making an excuse and saying, oh, I'm too old or too slow or too this or too that, I had to make up my mind, you know, I've got to do this. It, it, it's my health. It's my future. And I was like, Lord, I've got to do this. And even when uh, the doctors went in, they ran an extensive test, and he came back and said, you don't have any blockage in your heart. You just have this rhythm problem. We're going to get that under control. But basically, your heart is whole. You don't have uh, any kind of heart disease or anything. And I said to myself, you got a good heart. And But you know, I said to the Lord, I made a vow to you. I'm going to stick to that vow. And Lord, even if it's a pound at a time or whatever, I'm going to do what you put in my heart. And I want you to know, uh, when you make up your mind, how many know you can do anything? Come on, somebody. When you make up your mind and quit making excuses, I can make excuses and still be heavy and overweight this morning, and I want you to know I haven't arrived yet, but instead of making excuses, I decided I'm going to do something about it. And that's what God began to speak to my heart. We make excuses why we can't pray. We make excuses why we can't attend. We make excuses why we can't give. We make excuses why we can't witness. We make excuses why we can't bless others, or why we can't read the Word, or why we can't grow in God. But I want you to know it's just an excuse. How many know we don't need to make excuses? We need to step out and follow through. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Because when you make up your mind with the help of the Lord, how many know you can do it in Jesus' name? And so if you're going to start fresh and anew, it starts with you saying, okay, I've messed up before, I've let down before, I've given before, but today I'm going to start anew. I'm going to start afresh. I'm going to be better. And if you have a failure or a shortcut, I want to tell you, get yourself up, dust yourself off. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, up. Just say, you know what? I'm going to do better with the help of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, in the past four months, I've made a few mistakes. But I told my wife, you know, I got to stick to this. I can't go backwards. I got to go forward. And that's what he's telling us. Don't look behind. Go forward because God is something new and fresh for all of our lives. The second thing I notice about this that's very important is you have to remember the lessons that you learn. You know, remember the lessons that you learn. When I went to Proverbs 4, verse number 13, he says, hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. When I started thinking about that, I started thinking about how important it is, you know, that, that we uh, remember the lessons that we learn. How many know in life you will learn lessons? Somebody say amen. You know, life is an experience, and as you grow in your life, you will learn lessons. And I begin to think that in our decisions, in our choices, you know, in our, our ministries, in our families, in all areas of our life, uh, we learn lessons. And, and, you know, it's so important that we realize that God is teaching us and God is growing us. We don't always make the right choice. I don't know about you, but I've made a lot of wrong choices. Have you? Can somebody say amen? 
I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I, I made some wrong decisions in my life. And I got to thinking about that. But in spite of that, God showed up. And He used them, uh, listen, to grow me or to develop me. And God showed up time and time again. And when I went to Proverbs 15, uh, verse number 22, uh, a powerful scripture here. And I know it jumped ahead just a little bit on you, Crystal. But in Proverbs 15, uh, verse 22, He says, Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. In other words, you have people around you that you can trust. You have people around you, listen, that you get confidence from. And uh, you can sound off to and you can talk to. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the way my dad was with me. My dad was uh, a, a person that I could always talk to. I could always share anything with my dad. My dad would not judge me, but my dad would always speak the truth to me. If it was a ministry question or if it was a question in my family or a question making a decision, you know, I'd ask my dad, Dad, what do you think? How would you handle this? How would you handle this problem? How would you handle this situation? I knew my dad wasn't going to tell anybody. He wasn't going to say anything. He didn't even tell my mother. Come on, are you hearing me? And so I would tell my dad, I'd say, Dad, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I should handle this. And my dad would, he would let me make my own decision. But what my dad would do, he would guide me. And he would say, now, Tim, if this was me, this is what I would do. But he would say, I'm just telling you that from my perspective. But he said, I want you to look at it from your perspective. And then my dad would say, now, if it was me, have you tried it this way? And he would speak to me and he would show me a way. And most 90% of the time, his way would be the way. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And yet I have to be wise enough, uh, you know, to realize that he was actually leading me the right way. But he would say that, and not every time uh, did I choose it. I, I would, he made me see some things. I'd go a different way. But, you know, uh, I, I thought how important his counsel uh, was to my life. I have a couple of older pastors, Pastor Daryl Alley. You guys have met him. And uh, Pastor Lloyd Singley. They are uh, great men of God, and uh, both of them are retired. And a lot of times I can ask them uh, uh, spiritual questions, you know, and uh, they will always lead me and, and give me sound advice. And so I'm careful to seek that because I'm telling you, a person that doesn't seek advice many times gets themselves in trouble. Come on, are you hearing me? But when I sought out the counsel, I started thinking how, remember, is found 240 times in the Old and New Testament. Remember. And God is teaching us it's so important uh, that we, we remember. It's so important that we learn of the lessons that are laid out for us. When I went to 1 Corinthians 11, uh, verse number 2, uh, he says, I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding to the traditions just as I pass them on to you. And I want you to know we have a heritage in God. We have a, a blessing in God. We have a breakthrough in God. Uh, you know, I, I love, I'm a, I'm a big family man, and I love my family. And, and uh, you know, I, I think about uh, my family. My family, if you go back and trace the roots of my family, you find some pretty, uh, you know, interesting people that were in my family. Can you say amen? And some of them, I, I care not to really speak about or talk about. And then there are others that, you know, that I talk about all the time. You don't know why? Because they made an impression on my life. Uh, they were a blessing to my life. But one thing I found out, you know, family is important. That's why, uh, you know, I, I try to include our kids and stuff and our grandkids. And we're very uh, into our grandchildren. We love our grandchildren. But even that, Debbie knows I'm close to my cousins and I have a great relationship with them. And I love my aunts and my uncles and I only have one aunt and uncle left and I was very close to them and my grandmothers and my grandfathers and they were important to my life but you know I got to thinking how all of you are important to my life you know just like when I just got the news from my wife about sister Barbara you know my heart just broke because even though sister Barbara has been in the nursing home I want you to know she's a part of our family can you say man it made my heart just feel a little, you know, like, wow, I don't want to lose Sister Barbara. You know why? Because she's a part of us. 
But we cannot be afraid, listen, to trust or be afraid uh, to build or interact with other people in relationships. You know, uh, fellowship, what does it do? It strengthens us. It, you know, it helps us to grow together and be together. And we live by faith. See, God isn't moved by our complaints. How many know He's moved by our faith? Can you say amen? He's moved by our love and our compassion. Uh, when I went to Matthew 9, uh, verse number 29, Listen to what this verse says. It's a powerful verse. Then he touched their eyes and he said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. And I got to thinking, Miss Helen said it this morning when she walked into my office. You know, I'd sent a scripture out the other day, uh, just an encouragement on miracles. And she said to me, you know, I'm claiming that, Pastor Tim. You gave that to me. I'm claiming that. By faith, I'm believing. My God is a miracle working God. And I want to tell you something this morning morning in the family of God. I want to tell all of you, our God can do anything. Can you say amen? You know, faith causes us to do what we cannot do. Faith. Faith causes us to have that inner peace and that inner sanction and that inner power. And so I want to encourage you this morning, if you've been going through some testing, if you've been going through some trials, if some of you have been going through uh, some episodes in your life, I want to encourage you today, learn the lesson so you can move on and let God be the teacher. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and let the Lord direct you into His steps and may He keep you and may He prosper you and may He favor you in all of his ways can you say amen and then the last thing this morning not only do we remember the lessons we learn but we have to renew our mind you know when i started thinking about this i thought about a book that i read many years ago and i think i still have a book in my library but it's called the battlefield of the mind joyce myers wrote this book many years ago, and I remember when it first came out, somebody brought the book to me, and I read the book, and then I put it down after I finished it, and it was a month or two later, uh, I was able to give it to someone, they use it, and then I, I bought several of those books, I passed them out, and I, I picked it up and read it not long ago again, and I got to thinking how important it is that we have a renewed mind in Christ. You know, every day that we get up, the enemy's trying to sabotage our thoughts. Can you say amen? He tries so hard, whether it be a billboard or whether it be newspaper article or whether it be, listen, a magazine picture or, you know, whatever. He's trying so hard, a television commercial or, or something there uh, to implant a thought or an act or deed into your heart. But when I went to Ephesians 4, uh, verse number 23, this is what he says, you know, and uh, it says to be made new in the attitude of your mind. You know, when you get up, you say, you know what? I'm going to have a better attitude today than I had yesterday. I'm going to have a sweeter attitude. I'm going to have a truer attitude. I'm going to have a loving attitude. I'm going to have a, a strong attitude today, you know, of goodness in my heart. I'm going to believe that a God is going to do something fresh and new and vibrant in me. And so when you get that into your mind and you start thinking positive, I want you to know the enemy will constantly try to lead you down the road of negativity. He will get you, listen, to think negative thoughts or to speak negative words. He will try so hard to get you to, uh, to try to fashion on the negativism. But I want to encourage your heart that God wants you to stay positive. He wants you to remain in that mindset. I can do it. All things are possible. I can do it. I, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He gives you the fresh thoughts. He gives you the fresh attitude. All of a sudden, you go to the Word, and the Word becomes a priority. You read the word you study the word some of you hear the word you listen to it and you use the word and you declare the word and you trust God that he knows what he's doing in your heart in your mind and how many know in your life and as I began to just focus on God's word even if you don't understand sometimes why you're reading this or why this is going in your heart you know he's there leading you guiding you I always when i seek the lord for a message i say lord uh, you know help me god to to preach a message that i don't know what the people are going through but god you know what they're going through 
And always say, Lord, give me a word that, that will fit them and minister to them. And I know it hits all of you different. And, and some of you really need it that day. And others of you can be encouragement to you or strengthen you. But I always ask the Lord, not only minister to the people, but Lord, I ask you to minister to my heart as I'm studying your word. And so as I study it, and the many times, I would say almost 99.9% .9 of the time, the Lord is coming back at me. And he's saying to me, you know what? Don't make any excuses. He's saying to me, you know what? You just focus on me. You start, you finish. You make up your mind. You're not going to quit. You're not going to throw in the towel. You're not going to give up. You're not going to give in. You just keep on praying. You keep on seeking me. You remember the lessons you've learned in faith. And you stand tall. And if your mind's wavering, you renew your mind according to the Word of Heaven. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And so as I began to process that Word, all of a sudden it begins to move from my mind to my heart or my heart to my mind. And I begin to just feel that overpressing, listen, blessing of heaven because I'm restructuring my mind. And I, I think about that. I know Bub is in college and he's over here and he's, man, I, I told him the other day, I'm so proud of him. You know, he's in law school and uh, I can't imagine. I took some law classes in school and uh, man, I'll tell you what, they were hard classes. But they're nothing to what he's taking. He's taking a lot of hard classes. Why? Because it's teaching him how to become, you know, what he's going to become in the field that he's studying for. But I got to thinking by restructuring your mind, when you're going through this, it can become, listen, so imposed upon you uh, that you can get anxiety or you can get frustrated or you can feel like, man, I'm being overloaded. Sometimes that even happens to me sometimes uh, with the Word of God. I'm working on a message and I have to walk away for a little bit and come back and say, Lord, I'm just not getting what you're telling me to give to the people. And sometimes I'll tear the notes up, throw them away and start over. And sometimes I do it over and over again. And then the Lord will say, you got it, you got it, you got it, go with it. And I'll start preaching what the Lord has put in my heart. But I want you to know today, God wants us to renew our mind so that we will not become stagnant. We will not become stale. But how many know we become fresh and vibrant for the Holy Spirit to use us in the calling of God. When I looked at Romans 12, verse 2, do not conform. What does that mean? Do not be like the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing, perfect will. How are you going to do that, Pastor Tim? By allowing Him to transpose you. Allowing Him to transform you into His thinking. When I went to 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 5, we demolish arguments. Every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. I want you to know, people will argue, people will have their own thoughts, people will have their own ways, and you have to get the mind of Christ in you and listen to what God is saying. We take captive, listen, every thought. We make it obedient to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When the enemy comes in and says, you can't, you say, I can. When he tells you it'll never happen, you say, it will happen. It will. Because God put it in me, and I know it can happen. And I'm here to tell you this morning that when you get that mindset, instead of being discouraged, you encourage yourself in the Lord. Come on, y'all, hear me this morning. You build yourself up, you know. You speak positive. You stand tall. It's just like Debbie. And I was talking last night, and I was sitting across the room from her in my chair, and she's in her chair. And we were just talking, and Debbie said to me, you know, you know, when someone gets cancer, they have a choice to make. And I was listening, and I said, what? And she said, either they can fight to try to win, or they can give up. And then she asked me the question, what would you do? And I said, well, number one, I honestly don't know how to answer that. I said, I think I would want to think I would want to fight. I'd want to continue. But I said, Debbie, I, ha I, I haven't got it, so, and I don't want it. I'm not claiming it. So I'm telling you that I really don't know how to answer you because I'm not there. And she said, okay, I can, I can relate to that. But I said, I do want to say this, though. I do want to tell you that I'm so proud that you fought it. Come on, are you hearing me? 
I'm so proud that you got in the fight and I was in there with you. And even though I didn't, I didn't have cancer, I was in there battling with you in prayer and I was standing with you. But I'm so proud that you fought it and the Lord let us win this battle. Come on, are you hearing me? And I want to tell you, you don't know what other people are going through. It's kind of like this week. I had a chance to minister to a couple and they were talking about this person, that person, and all this stuff. And I said, no, 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 wait a minute. We're not going to talk about people because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they face. You don't know what battles or upheavals they've gone through in their life. You can't judge them just because of something you heard or something you see. You have to, you have to love them regardless, and you have to trust that God is doing a work in them just like he's doing in you. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And when you have that mindset, Reminding me of something my grandpa used to say, don't judge a man until you walk in his shoes. Don't judge a woman until you walk in her shoes. And I got to thinking about that. You know, it came to my heart because it's so true. You don't know what they're facing. You don't know what battles they've been through. And you know what? All we can do is pray for people and encourage people and trust people. But whatever we deal with, we can know God will help us. How many know God wants to help you today? Come on, amen. He's there with you in your quest, in your struggle, in your battle. You know, and He can resurrect something and bring it new. He can bring life and freshness to it in a relationship, a marriage, a friendship. I want you to know, a son, a daughter, you know, He can do it in a particular need. doesn't matter what it is. How many know He's God? And He changes not. And you know, I don't want to be God. I'm not God. I told my wife this this week. I don't want to be God. When I led my little dog and took it in and put my little dog to sleep, I don't want to be God. He makes those calls. He makes those decisions. I leave it in His hands. And I want to tell you something. God, you know, He knows what He's doing for all of us. But I'm telling you, His will be done. Come on. His will be done. And you say, Pastor Tim, what are you saying? I'm saying trust Him. You can believe in Him that if it happens, He has a plan for your life. There's a moment that God wants to use you and so as our worship team comes back and heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you walked into this service this morning, last Sunday of September 2023 and you came in and you say, Pastor Tim, I'm in the battle. I'm in the struggle. I, you know, I just kind of feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I'm just kind of going around in, in circles. I'm not really doing anything. It's like me fake running. You know, my wife's laughing, but I'm fake running. I'm not doing anything. Maybe moving my arms. I didn't run anywhere. I'm still standing in the same spot. And she says, what are you doing? And I said, well, my, my legs hurt so bad I can't run today. And I was, wasn't an excuse. It was truth. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it in my mind like I'm running. She said, silly man, you are so funny. And she laughed, and I said, I know I am, but I got to do something. I got to stay on course. And I want to tell you something. You know what? God honor honors our faith. He honors it. He loves you. He cares about you. He cares about you. You're here. You're in the house of the Lord this morning. I didn't come in here to beat you up. I didn't come in here to make you feel bad. I didn't come in here to twist your arm, force you into anything. That's not what I came to do. I came in here to tell you, search your heart. Search your heart, just like I searched mine. And as I searched my heart, I said, Lord, I need more of you. I want something fresh and alive and new and vibrant in my life that's what I want and perhaps you're saying the same thing I just want to draw closer to the Lord I want to get stronger in my mind I want to be more positive I want to, I want to know by faith that it's happening because God said it could whatever it is that you're dealing with today I don't know how this word spoke to you but I'm here to tell you 
all things work together for good to them who are called according to his purpose. How many know he's called you? He's called you out. He's he's got a plan for you. Melvin always says that. It's God's plan. And I believe what Melvin says. It is God's plan. He's got a plan for you. And so as you're here today, you're saying, you know what? I want to start fresh, and I want to start new. As heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Can I see your hand? You say, I want to start fresh. I want to start new. Let me see your hand this morning. Yes, 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 yes. I see those hands. My hand's raised with you. I want to start fresh. I want to start anew. I want you to stand with me all over the house if you can. I know we got some elderly people. It's hard for them to stand. And listen, Pastor Tim understands that. And by all means, you keep your seat. You raise your hand. You know what? We love you. We care about you. We're not here to make you do anything that's uncomfortable to you. But as you raise your hand and you say, Lord, let's start afresh. Start anew in me. I want to make this our prayer today. Lord, I know we're moving into the the last, last part. Lord, it's fall now. We're moving into the last part of this year. And God, this year has been a tough one. I'm telling you, it's been a rough one. But you have been with us every step of the way. And I pray today for the body of Christ. I just want to encourage them this morning. Lord, that you're with them and you want to help them and you want to put some strength in them and some newness in them. And don't let them be discouraged this morning. I don't want anybody to be discouraged. Don't let them be frustrated this morning or feel like they don't measure up because everybody's important to you. We pray today that you touch our hearts, Lord. God, touch our lives. And here we come as the worship. They're about to sing a song, and I don't know what they're going to sing. But you do. You put it on their heart. And I'm sure it'll line up this morning. But Lord, as they sing... I pray today that it touches our hearts. And Lord, let us go out of here rejoicing, knowing that God is on our side. He's got the best for us. And I pray today, Lord, you fill us with love and you fill us with compassion. And Lord, you fill us with peace and truth and honor and character today. Give us your grace, Lord. Let it just come forth from us and in us. And Lord, let us be a light to others that are in need. And we pray for them. And we pray for Miss Barbara's family again. We pray for them this morning. It's got to be hard on them. But Lord, we just ask you to wrap your arms around them. Love them this morning. And touch all of us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Will you worship with me as they sing this song this morning? Amen. Spirit sound rushing wind, fire of God fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us. As we repent, turn from sin, revival and Older in breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit Church, bear your light, lamp of flame. 
city bright king and kingdom come is what we pray we need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit you to strengthen us. We ask you to pour your spirit upon all of our hearts. We give you the praise, the glory, the honor for all you've done for each and every one of us. And we thank you, Lord, for being Lord and master of our life. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Shake hands, be friendly. May God go with you as you go with him. Don't forget in the back, they have uh, fruit. They have uh, vegetables. I mean, I want you to know uh, they have pistachios. They have bottled, not bottled, but canned uh, water, mineral water. They have all kinds of stuff back there. So go back there and get you some. God bless all of you. Thank you, guys. Great.